Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I am back in Small Victories, the new coloring book by Johanna Basford and I'm going to do the little picture that got the second most votes into my little Instagram vote and that's a little butterfly. So I'm going to use a slightly bluer color palette but I want a nice contrast between the background and the butterfly so we're going to go in with the warm terracotta colors for the butterfly today so just like I've done with the other pictures on this page I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell polychromos just to get a nice uniform look for all of these little pictures they are so incredibly cute and so far I am loving this book so my plan for this background is to have a little bit of a mix between some lighter areas and some darker shadows. I want it to be a nighttime sky, but I'm not going to go super dark for all of it. But I want to be able to have some little white highlights here and there. And I'm going to, for once, I'm not going to erase that star that's there. It's going to get to stay this time. Now, due to it being a really grey and dark day today, I am sitting over by the window. So I am getting a little bit more shadows onto my page than what I would like. And I am getting a one of those light diffusion sheets that I can put up whenever I do that. But it's definitely better than having too dark an area if I sit somewhere else in the room. So you'll just have to bear with me today with a little bit of extra shadows and who knows like the lighting might be a little bit on and off today but it shouldn't be too bad hopefully. So now that I've got my little layer of sky blue down, I'm going to go in with my ultramarine and start layering over the top. So I'm going to leave a couple of little areas 
just with the sky blue for a while to so I have some highlights to work with later on. And then we're going to build up some more colors in the darker areas here. So with the blue tones that I'm using, I'm using the sky blue as you've seen, the ultramarine, cobalt blue, indanthrene blue and my dark indigo. So you can go ahead and get all of those out and if you want to get all your pencils out they are as usual listed in the description box below. So I'm now layering in with my cobalt blue and again I'm layering this on top but again I'm leaving even a bigger highlight than what I did before just so we have those nice little transitions and then when I actually go all the way up so what I tend to do if I'm doing these transitions is I'm working my way from my lightest to my darkest color and then I reverse that process going from my darkest to my lightest. So you'll see me go all the way up to the dark indigo and then I'll work my way back again, right back down to the sky blue. And that will give a really nice smooth transition.
now I was thinking that as we're about to head into December that after this one here we should maybe get started on some Christmas coloring what do you guys think I know there is one in here in small victories that is a bit of a Christmas wreath that we could do or we could go ahead and use Johanna's Christmas which one would you prefer that I worked in so let me know in the comments below I hope you're enjoying this video if you are I'd love it if you take the time to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here I would love to have you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content
so I worked my way back down and I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of a layer of my sky blue just to smooth everything out and give it a really nice blend and then we're going to get started on our leaves today so with the leaves I'm going to start out with the earth green and the juniper green just so we get a little bit more of a blue undertone compared to what I tend to do. Usually I start with either the earth green yellowish or the may green but I found for a nighttime picture I thought that was a little bit too yellow. So we'll start with the greens with a little bit more blue in them and then we'll work it out from there. Alright, it is leaf time and as I mentioned I'm going to start with my earth green here and I'm just going to lay this down on all of the leaves. I'm doing roughly the same color combination for all of them and I'm just sort of working my way from the, my dark area all the way out to my lighter and just using nice light layers as usual. So if you haven't had a look in the description box, the green tones that I'm using for this one is Earth Green, Juniper Green, May Green, Permanent Green Olive, Earth Green Yellowish and then I went in with a little bit of Dark Indigo and some of the uh, Chrome Oxide Green as well.
so as you can see even with just the two colors we are starting to get a little bit of shape onto these leaves if you only wanted to use two colors you could keep alternating between the earth green and the juniper green and sort of build up some gradients and transitions and sort of use a little bit more pressure to get some darker colors but I do like to use at least three colors so I probably would have brought in an even darker one and used my juniper green as my mid-tone but that's obviously what I'll be doing with this one but if you bit pressed for time you can definitely get away with just using two or three.
So just like I've done with the other two pictures on this page that we've done so far is I'm avoiding black as a shadow for these ones. I just feel like sometimes it can get, get a little bit too harsh. So I'm using today, I'm using my dark indigo and I'm also going to use my burnt umber for my shadows. And it, they're just a little bit softer and they don't give that a super harsh transition between sort of your highlights and your shadows but obviously black still has it has its place you, you definitely need it for certain things but today I think we can get away with just using a really nice dark blue Thank you. 
Now, I know I said I'm going in a little bit simple with these leaves. You might think that I'm going way over the top because I am using quite a few different colors, but really I can easily spend half an hour on one leaf if I wanted to. So we are definitely toning it down on what I could usually get up to, but this will still work out nicely. And when you do it like the way I'm doing it now, when do, we're doing each color on all of the leaves before we move on to the next, it does pick up the pace a little bit and gives you a bit more, oh, let, let you sort of finish off your picture a little bit quicker instead of sort of doing each individual leaf. It does take a bit of time just picking up and putting down and finding the right colors. So by doing it this way, you can pick up your pace a little bit. So I'm just going to go in with my earth green yellowish. This one is a little bit hard to see, but you can actually see it when I'm sitting by the window here, just because of the indentations in the pencil. But usually the words have actually, I've used this so much that the words have sort of rubbed off on it a little bit. But it is the 163 if you're looking for the number. So I'm going to go in with my Sakura Jelly Roll and remove a few black outlines. I usually do this mainly in my lighter areas and any dark areas I kind of leave in place. I'll probably go in a little bit later and just touch up a bit more once I've got some more of this picture done and just increase the amount of shadows I've got. But at the moment, it's good to just go ahead and remove these outlines because it will give you an indication of where you need to add more and where you can leave your highlights as they are.
So I'm going to do this little butterfly in a transition from this sort of Naples yellow to a, uh, I'm thinking the sanguine or maybe even the Venetian red. We'll see how dark I end up going, but my terracotta color is going to be sort of the main, the mid-tone that we're going to see the most of. But I'm going to do this Naples yellow to start with and I'm going to layer the rest over the top. So one of my little things when I do butterflies is that I like to do one set of the wings from dark to light and then I will like to do the other set of wings from light to dark. So on these top ones I have my darkest areas towards the body of the butterfly and then I kind of fade my way out to the lighter areas towards the tip of the wings. And then I do the exact opposite on those bottom two wings. So I have my lighter area towards the body and then I got my darkest area down towards the bottom of the wings. Of course I do add in a little bit of shading and things but I just I just like that sort of way of, of doing things. A little bit of a mix and match.
So I'm just going to go in with the Burnt Umber, which is going to be my shading pencil for this butterfly. So I'm going to go in just at in the areas here on this bottom wing and anything overlapping I'll give a little bit of a shadow and just that very tip where it goes in by the body there I'll just give it a little bit of a shadow as well and I'm also going to use this color for the body together with the raw umber as well. So I feel like I need a little bit more on the red side on these little wings. So I'm just going to use the Venetian red just at the tip of these little sort of patterns that's on the wings here. Just so we have a bit more of a contrast between our lights and our darks. It's not sort of super dark and it's not crazy red either. I do like it, this Venetian one. It's nice and muted. And very earthy and not crazy bright but it's definitely one of my favorite red tones and I use it quite frequently So now that I've got all of my elements colored in, I just want to go in and touch up a little bit more on the leaves here, add a bit of shadows, especially where I still have the black outlines intact. I just want to make sure that the black outline isn't too visible, if that makes sense. I'm sort of having that dark green there kind of tones it down just that little bit so it just looks like it's part of the shadows on the leaf there and it's not standing out like a sore thumb.
and I'm going to actually do exactly the same thing now with the background just add a little bit more of this dark indigo sort of here and there especially sort of on the darker side of my leaves as well um, just having that dark indigo right next to the black outline on the leaf will help with those retoning that down that outline as well So I'm just going to finish off with a few little white highlights with my Sakura Jelly Roll. So I forgot to mention before, but it is the 08. When I'm doing these sort of little dots, the 08 or the 10 is a good size one. But if you're just doing outlines, I do usually prefer the 05, just because it's a little bit finer, so it doesn't give you that really harsh white line on there but unfortunately my 05 has sort of dried up a little bit on the tip and I can't seem to get any more out of it just because I ended up losing my little the little hat for it, the little top so I dried it out unfortunately and I just need to go and buy myself a new one so in the meantime I'm just going to make do with the 08 and that'll be fine you may find that if you having too much white come out you can always let that dry and then go over it very lightly with one of your colors but if you're going in super light you might not necessarily need it but it's an option if you want it There we go here is our little butterfly with our night sky and leaves already i think i like i really like the sort of contrast on we have the blue the cold blue and green with our warm sort of red and terracotta and yellow tones on the butterfly so i'm really happy with how this page so far is turning out i hope you've enjoyed following along with me today i really appreciate you being here and i wish you all a colorful day and i will see you again next time